you couldn't even think about doing this now, but it's like, okay, we'll just go out there and we won't work and we'll have all our time to ourselves and we'll survive, you know? So we bought this, did he talk about this? Yeah, the, yeah we bought this piece of land um, in Montrose or outside Montrose at 7,600 feet altitude. I mean, it's crazy. So we had this notion that we would go out there and be self-sufficient. So we left the city and we sort of left the whole art thing behind. And you still made films, but I, I didn't, I mean, it's so tough to survive out there. Like most of our time was spent going out, getting wood, trying to stay warm, and, you know, and building the house. And, and I, that was, a, and to me, building is like, uh, is, takes the place of doing art. So, and you can see that in my recent years also. So, I love to build. I always did. I built lots of clubhouses when I was a kid, and this is jumping back to when I was a child, but um, one of the most ecstatic experiences I had was kludging together this clubhouse out of a pile of old wood that somebody had torn something down, like really old, old, uh, tongue and groove, a little thin, and we, we actually created a structure, a space, we created a space that we could go into and come back out of, and that was just like a miracle, a total miracle. So I would, add, so then I would dream about these, I basically wanted to build this miniature Parthenon, but somehow it was below ground. It was a very archetypal, I mean, I have no idea what this means, well, I have some idea what it means, but anyway. So I'd ask my mom, and I would, I made this materials list, you know, I knew I had needed so many concrete blocks and so many, you know, I knew, I knew exactly how I was going to make this thing. And I, I gave my mom this list of materials that I wanted from the, and I knew the lumber yard would deliver it. And she was like, I don't think so. <laughs> my mom never knew what to do with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> At some point, you got involved in Star Wars. Yeah. But do you want to, could you maybe Yeah, Adam, I don't, you know, he just asked, he must have called me and asked me if he, I wanted to work for him, and that was, you know, that was my first experience working in the film industry. And I was eager to work for him because we needed money desperately. I mean, any kind of extra, I was entirely financially motivated. I mean, I had no interest in, you know, working on a commercial film or any of that. And I remember going in, but it turned out to be an absolutely incredible experience because, you know, Lucas was there and he had the whole storyboard on his office wall and it was just, the whole Star Wars production was in just a small warehouse on Van Nuys, I think it was, or Sherman Way, I don't remember what. I remember driving down there with Adam in his VW van, you know, and looking at the storyboard and thinking, oh, what a piece of shit, you know, this is going to be awful. <laughs> and, but Adam was just insane. I mean, he had ordered this, um, he was in charge of uh, lasers, I think, at that point, and explosions. And so we started with lasers, and he had this special piece of glass that must have been 12 feet long, he ordered from Belgium. Don't ask me why. I mean, it had something to do with optics. And then we, and then he wanted me to draw these gigantic, you know, ten foot long lines that would be these, I mean, you know, optical elements for the lasers. And he, he thought they had to be that long because they had to be perfect. Well, you're just blowing light through them. I mean, you don't see the lines. And, and he, we were using the rapidiographs, which are just you know, constantly clogging. He made me use really tiny ones, and then, you know, you can't draw a continuum. I mean, he had these huge, big steel rulers, but I still had to, you know, and where the lines joined, I had to look in a mic, you know, under a loop, and it was just all insane. <laughs> but I did it, and Adam loved me because I would do it, and I never questioned it. It's like, you want this? Okay, we'll try as hard. I'll try as hard as I can. You know. I wanted to talk about the effect of Oasis had uh, on my will to produce work. And basically I made Rose for Red because of this community 
and we, we were putting in a lot of time and effort in every two weeks to do these screenings and it became really kind of this um, it, it became kind of the primary thing we were doing even though it was just one night every two weeks it was like we were always oriented to that we always had to be in town to do it you know it became a big it was almost like having a child but the, it was a wonderful community you know the, the the meetings although we had our squabbles um, which I don't really remember now but the thing I remember is when we hired Arlene Zeichner to do the pro to, to actually do the work that we had been volunteering to do was the end of Oasis and not it was not Arlene's fault but it's that the minute we stopped sharing collaborating on the actual work it's like the something slipped away and